All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College and as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies course, I've been creating a series of video presentations based off of the Mozilla Developer Network Learn Web Development Series. As you can see, I'm in the Tools and Testing section under Understanding Client Side Web Development Tools and we're talking Command Line Crash Course. All right, in your development process, you'll undoubtedly be required to run something from the command line all right or the terminal which as it says mean the same thing so this is a little intro to it now let me just mention to you this is a very much an aside but i'll try to keep it short and sweet i've been ed in education for about 30 years and um, <clears throat> i taught for three and a half years at a school up in north north central wisconsin then i went back into industry for a year and then i got back into a school in southern Wisconsin <clears throat> before I came here about five years ago to Rankin. Well, the reason I'm telling you that is when I came back to uh, the, the school I taught in in southern Wisconsin, um, literally, I interviewed on like the 27th of December, and I started like January 6th. And what they told me at the time was they said, well, don't worry, you're going to have uh, – it was, it was structured very different than it is here. But they said you'll have seven classes. And the good news is five of them are the same class. It was a beginning class for people in any program that taught them computer basics. <clears throat> and one of the basics that I taught them was DOS, the disk operating system. And, and it's like if I come in here into my, my bar, you know, my search bar here, and I type in CMD and I hit enter, that's DOS. All right, I am basically at a terminal right here. So I can do a, I can type DIR and I can get a directory listing. I can change directories to my desktop, clear the screen and do a DIR. Now that stuff that you see right there is the same thing that you see right here. All right, and when I was in teaching that class, they said, hey, don't worry about it because you gotta go over DOS because they need an understanding, but don't worry because DOS is on its way out and it'll be gone very soon anyway. Well, I, like I said, that's a good 20, more than 30 years ago or around 30 years ago, and it's still here. The terminal is still here. This is one way to get to a terminal. Another way to get to a terminal is I've got Git loaded on my machine, and when I right mouse click and I choose Git bash here, this is a terminal as well, right here. Now, it looks a little different because the editor color codes it, all right, but it is a terminal nevertheless. So I can still type in DIR, and I can get a listing of all the stuff that I've got here, all right? Now, before I typed in CLS to clear the screen, now i got to type in clear, but you get the idea. Not only that, if I'm in... Here, in if I'm in Visual Studio Code, and let me just get rid of this getting started, and we'll keep the form up, and I'll get rid of this. All right. I can come in here and type in terminal, new terminal, and guess what? This is another terminal. It's not colored like the other one is. It's, it's white with black text, but it works the same way. But I'm running basically Windows PowerShell, which is another way of doing it. So I've just shown you here three different ways that I can run this. So the terminal, as it says, is a text interface for executing text-based programs. All right, it's also called the CLI or command line interface. A large number of tools can be used by typing commands into the command line. And what I'm showing you is the command line for Windows. There's, there's basically a different command line that you use for DOS, I'm sorry, for Unix and for, for, for uh, Mac. <clears throat> One of the biggest criticisms of the command line is that it lacks hugely in user experience. Well, you've already seen that. That doesn't do a lot to enhance your user experience. All right. That said, it can be unbelievably powerful and you can do a lot of different things with it. It's a lot of times a lot faster than doing them in a way that is much more, it's got a better user experience. All right. So as it says, the term terminal originated 50, 60 years ago, I guess 60 or 70 years ago, 
All right. It says you can read a, a brief history of it there. That's fine. Since then, the terminal has remained a constant feature of all operating systems. It is also useful for automation. <clears throat> you can write yourself files that do a lot of things. For instance, let's just, I'll just give you a quick example here. So I've got this thing that I used last weekend. This is a picture and it's called IT background. All right. If I wanted to change the name of that, I could sit there and click on the picture. And if I wanted to just call it background, all right, I could get rid of the words IT and boom, now it's background. In fact, if I look here and I type in <clears throat> DIR B star, well, how much is DIR? One of the things that's going to come in here is background. There it is. Which, But notice it's spelled wrong now. Either I did it or it was spelled wrong originally. Probably I spelled it wrong originally. But I can come in here <clears throat> and I can say rename B-A-C-C-K background dot. I don't even know what its extension is. JPEG dot JPG and rename it B-A-C-K ground dot JPG and hit enter. And it says, well, it says that the command is not found. Let's try it again with the word rename. Well, it doesn't like it, but there is a rename command. I guess I'm not sure what it is here. Okay. All right. I could remove it if I wanted to. Let's see if I can copy it. Um, it's either a copy or CP. So copy B-A-C-K-G-R-O-U-N-D B-A-C-C-K background dot JPEG to B-A-C-K ground dot JPEG. Might give me an error. All right. So according to this, it made a copy of it. Well, there's the original. I don't see the copy. Oh, there it is. So now I've got two of them. Now I don't need the original one anymore, so I should be able to delete B-A-C-C-K-G-R-O-U-N-D dot JPEG. Oh, how about the word delete? Doesn't like that either. But then again, how about remove? Remove. Um, all right. And now it's gone. So those are just, I mean, that's what they're talking about in here. All right. Just so you're aware of it. I don't use it that often. And you can tell. Now, I shouldn't say that I don't use it that often. I do use this quite a bit. In, in accordance or with, with Git and GitHub, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right. So what does the terminal look like? Well, there's basically, as it says, there's the CMD. PowerShell is in blue. That's how it looks on a Mac. I've also shown you how it looks in uh, basically running Git Bash. So how do you access it? I guess I've shown you that as well. All right. Again, you've got one for Linux, one for Mac, and one for Windows. All right. It says here the best option for Windows is the modern day Windows subsystem for Linux. That's something you can download if you've got a, a reason to do so. All right, what's the difference between a command line and a terminal? Generally, these two terms will be used interchangeably. Technically, a terminal is software that starts and connects to a shell, which is a session and an associated environment where things can happen. The command line is a literal line where you enter commands, all right? Do you have to use the terminal? Typically, no, all right? Some of the built-in commands, I guess I should have looked here. I guess I could have used the move command before when I you know, moved it. So I showed you CD to change directory. There's MKDIR to make a directory. You can create files, so I can come in here for example, here I am on my desktop, and I can say touch, and I'll just say jeffscott.txt. All right, you say nothing happened. Oh, contraire. There's jeffscott.txt. Now, there's nothing in it, but I was able to go in and create an empty file. Delete with remove. <clears throat> Downloading files, curl. These are some of the tools that you can use. GREP, which stands for Global Regular Expression Pattern. Um, <clears throat> there's LESS, there's CAT, 
which allows you to look at a file, and there's a bunch of other ones. Some of these are more related to the Linux or Unix operating system. All right, navigation on the command line. When you visit the command line, it says inevitably you'll need to navigate to a particular directory, and that's the CD command. I've already shown you that. All right, so if I wanted to go up one level from where I currently am in here, I could type in CD dot dot, which means go up a level. So now you can see I'm right here. <clears throat> and now if I type in DIR, one of the things it's going to show me is in here someplace there, the desktop. All right, so if I want to change back to the desktop, I can say CD to desktop. Now I'm back on my desktop, CLS to clear my, whoop, CLEAR to clear my screen. All right, and they go through a lot of this. Listing directory contents, I did the DIR. You can also do an LS, and you can do an LS minus L, which gives you even more information. Now, much of the stuff that's shown in here is, again, more Unix. If you've got a D in front, it means it's a directory or, a, you know, basically a folder. R means there's three sets of RWXs in here. The first RWX is the read, write, and execute permission for me. The next one is the read, write, and execute permission for whoever's defined to be my group. And the last one is the read, write, and execute permission for the world. All right. And you can change all sorts of stuff. I remember years ago, somebody had taken a file, and these all have numbers associated with them. The read has four, the write has, um, the read has four, the write has two, and the execute has one. So adding those together is seven. So this has got a permission of seven, five, five. All right, I don't know if I can still do this, but let's see. Um, there is a command that you can come in. So if I changed it to 777, this would then say DRWX, RWX, RWX. If I said for some reason I'd never do this because it would be foolish, but if I said the name and I said to change the permissions to 000, it would be D dash 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 dash, which would be stupid because then nobody could access it. All right, but just to show you a little bit of this stuff. Now, if you're interested in that, you should be really checking out the Rankin Technical College Information Technology Program, where they've got a class that goes into a lot of this stuff. I've shown you a little bit of creating, copying, moving, etc. MKDIR just allows you to make a copy. RMDIR, you know, MKDIR allows you, I should say, to make a folder. RMDIR removes a folder. <clears throat> but the folder must be empty. Can you get around that? Of course you can. Touch I've shown you. Move is basically if you want to rename something. Or you can move it from one location to another. CP for copying it. All right. RM for removing it. All right. Some of these um, terminal commands take wildcard characters, which is typically the asterisk. Be leery of using that because that'll change, remove, do whatever to everything that it finds. All right. It says you need to be careful with the terminal. Simple commands do not carry too much danger, but as soon as, soon as you start putting them together, they can. Another good tip, if you're not comfortable trying them on your machine, a nice place to go and try them I've never done and gone over here is glitch.com. It says along with being a great place to try out web development code, the projects also give you access to a terminal, so you might want to check that out as well. All right. As mentioned here, the terminal really comes into its own when you start to chain commands together by using a pipe. Okay. <clears throat> so here's an example of piping. If you did the ls command and then you piped it, and put in WC minus L, as it says, it prints each file or directory on its own line, and it gives you a file count. We can try that. Again, I don't want to go off too far on a tangent here because this isn't really much stuff that we would we would do in the program here. But let's paste that in. And it basically says, well, what do I have? I've, it looks like I got 22 files. So if I just did an LS and counted, there should be 22 of them here. 
and, and some of these are going more than one line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There should be 22. How's that? I might have miscounted. <clears throat> so the pipe allows you to connect and use the output of one command as the input into another command. And they've got other examples here. I'm not going to run through these right now. <clears throat> All right. It says, let's look at how you can install a third-party CLI tool and take advantage of it. Well, Node.js is unbelievably easy to install. Literally, if you know what you're doing, and even if you don't, you can do it in, one, in no more than, than, a, than a couple of minutes. And how do you do that? Well, again, if I didn't know, I would say Node.js download. I would put that into Google, and I'd come here and I where it says download Node.js. It's under HTTPS colon slash slash node.js slash download. And figure out I wanted the window installer. All right, I just click right there. Basically, that's all I have to do and then go through. I, I believe I've already got it here. <clears throat> so I think I've got node on my system already. Yeah, I do. All right. And I, I install that, what, in April. So really no sense in doing it again. It's 14.16.1. So what, now we're up to 14.17. All right. Where to install CLI tools? <clears throat> well, again, they talk about NPM. We're going to hit on this a little bit later on in the class. When we go through some of the server side stuff, plus we go over this in a lot of depth and breadth of coverage in the AWD 1111 <clears throat> class, which is our um, database driven web development class. All right. Prettier, we've already talked about. I'm not going to hit on that anymore. There's other tools that you can play with as well. All right. And that was a very brief tour. So next we're going to go into package management bases, basics rather. And I'll be back with that in a couple minutes. Oh, I should mention just before I leave, if I do want, if I don't want this anymore, all right, I can just type in exit, and now I'm out. I guess log out. It looked like would have worked as well. 